Okay, in this video, we're going to start the 4.1 notes. So we are talking about triangles. Up to this point, we had not talked about shapes. We were talking about the um, lines and other planes and other things like that. So now we're going to talk about triangles. Okay, so before we actually begin this section, we're going to do this prerequisite skills. So this is old stuff that's still important. So look at the very first question. It says vocabulary check. Classify the angle as acute, obtuse, right, or straight. So think about this. We can put our answers on the line. Okay, if I have an angle that is greater than 90, it is obtuse. And that's the word I'm going to write here. So join me in doing that. Two, if I have an angle that's exactly 90 degrees, you should know that that's a right angle. Three, if the angle in the M stands for measure, if the measure of angle C equals 35, that is acute because it's less than 90. And lastly, if the measure of angle D equals 95, that's still obtuse because it's greater than 90. So hopefully you got those. Okay, so it's always important to know how to solve algebraic equations. So here are some for us to try. So over here, I want you to write, here's your equation, 70 plus 2y equals 180. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 70 from both sides. Minus 70, minus 70. I end up getting 2y equals 110. Divide both sides by 2, and you will get y equals 55. Okay, so that's your final answer there. Hopefully you can do those steps because you always want to keep that skill set current. Okay, so this was all of 5. So let me change my color so you have some contrast for 6. So 6 says 2x equals 5x minus 54. So I'm going to move things around. I'm going to add 54 to each side. That's going to eliminate the 54 on the right and put 54 here. Then I'm going to subtract 2x from each side. That's going to give me a 3x here. Okay, so I have 3x equals 54. So you need to take a time and do some division. So this is how you would do that. You would take your 54, because you don't want to always be grabbing a calculator, and divide it by 3. 3 goes into 5 one time with 2 left over. Put your 2 right here above the 4. That number becomes 24. And 3 goes into 24 8 times. So that is the quick way to get your answer x equals 18 and that was no calculator okay so let's change our color again for number seven it says 40 plus x plus 65 is 180 okay 40 plus x plus 65 equals 180 combine like terms and you get 105 plus x equals 180 Subtract 105 from each side, and you're left with x equals 75. Okay, so hopefully you're able to do those. Okay, so then we have other work to do. We're going to do that down here. So we're going to get the midpoints. So we want to find the coordinates of the midpoints. And here are all the points, and here is our equation. So this is going to be on the midterms. We want to remember how to do this. So what you basically do is you add the x values together and divide by 2, and then do the same thing to the y values and divide them by 2. That gives you your midpoint. So for number 8, I'm going to take my x value of 2 and add it to negative 1. Divide that by 2. And then take my y value of negative 5 and add that 
to a negative 2 and divide that by 2. So what do I get? 2 plus a negative 1 is a positive 1. So my x value of the midpoint is 1 half. Negative 5 minus 2 is a negative 7. So the y value of the midpoint is 7 halves, and that's a coordinate pair, so they belong in parens. Okay, let's move over to 9. So 9 says I have two points. I want to find the midpoint again. I'm always using this equation, or this formula rather. So negative 4, so for number 9, I'm going to say negative 4 uh, plus... 1 over 2 is my x value, and then 7 plus a negative 5 over 2 is my y value. Okay, negative 4 plus 1 is going to give you negative 3 over the 2, and 7 minus 5 is 2 over 2, which is just 1, and that's your best answer for the coordinate pair that marks your midpoint. Okay, we have one more of these. And again, if you need to stop the video for a second so that you can process, that's a good thing. Okay, so use this to your advantage. Okay, number 10. Now, 10 is interesting because I have no real numbers other than the zero. So let's just use the formula. H is the x value for the P plus H is the x value for the Q and divide that by 2. Okay, k is the y value for the point P, and 0 is the y value in point Q. So do that math. Okay, h plus h gives me 2h. Divide that by 2, and the 2's cancel, so you're left with an h. k plus 0 is just k. k over 2 is the final answer. So you're coordinate pair that marks the midpoint of those two points, P and Q, is going to be H comma K over 2. Okay, no numbers, but that's okay. We followed the example, and they gave us a variable, so we had to work with the variables. Okay, so 11, 12, 13, 14 really pertains to the test we just had the other day. So look at number 11. They want to know how angle 2 and angle 3 up here are related. So 2 and 3. They don't give you a word bank, so you've got to figure this out. And they want to know, determine whether the angles are congruent, and if so, explain why. So they are congruent, and it's because these are vertical angles. So hopefully you spotted that. Vertical angles. <coughs> the 12. 1 and 4. 1 and 4 are congruent. And hopefully you spotted the fact that they are corresponding angles, and that's why they're congruent. Okay, 2 and 6 is for number of question number 13. So 2 and 6 are also congruent. Okay, so they're congruent. And how come? Let's look at 2 and 6. 2 and 6 are alternate interior angles, and they are congruent. So alternate interior. Okay, last one. 3 and 4. So 3 is here, and 4 is here. Okay, so they are not congruent because they have no relation. Okay, they're not one of the angles we've studied. So they are not congruent. Okay, so that's all little review of some prerequisite skills and now we're ready to start this chapter so here's the beginning of the notes so i told you that we're dealing with triangles so sure enough we're going to work with triangles and we're going to apply the triangle sum properties so we have to figure out some characteristics of triangles so triangles have two major classifications you can classify them by sides or you can classify them by angles. We're going to do sides first. Here's a new vocab word. This is pronounced scalene. Scalene triangles, classified by sides, are triangles that have absolutely zero congruent sides. 
And if you wanted to illustrate that, you could either have no markings on your triangle, indicating that nothing's the same, or, which is a little bit clearer, you can have three different markings on your triangle, and that indicates that each side has a different length. Okay, so here I have sides written in this big box. So why don't you tell yourself that you have three sides for every single triangle. Okay, isosceles triangles have at least two congruent sides. They can have three, but normally the illustration shows you two. So look, these are the same markings. Therefore, those sides are equal. That is an isosceles triangle. Equilateral triangles, or e yeah, equilateral triangles. You should see the word equi, which means equal, and lateral, which means side, you know, like a lateral pass in football is off to the side. So that says equal sides. So if it's equilateral, all the sides are equal. And since you have three of them, you have three congruent sides. And the way you would mark that is you'd have a triangle. And then you would mark every single side with the same markings. Okay, those are called hashtags. Okay, if they have the same hashtags, that means that the lengths are exactly the same. Okay, so that's classifying by sides. Now we're going to classify by angles. So there are four classifications here. So you could have acute triangles. And acute triangles will have three acute angles. So it will kind of look like this. Okay? So there are acute angles. So all angles are less than 90 degrees. That's what acute means. Okay? If you classify a triangle by angles and you call it a right triangle, it has exactly one right angle. So here you go. Here's your triangle. Here's the right angle that's indicated by the box. And that's a right triangle. An obtuse triangle has exactly one obtuse angle. So if I was to draw that, maybe I would draw it like, let's see, if I make it super big, let me just make that better. Okay, if I make this really big angle and then I continue this line, here, this right here is your obtuse angle. And that obtuse angle, remember, has to be greater than 90 degrees. Okay? The last type of classification by angles is equiangular. For equiangular triangles, you have three congruent angles. And this is how you note that. Here's your triangle. Same angle markings in each corner. That's where the angles live. Since they have the same markings, I know that those three angles all have the same measurement. Okay? So I'm going to ask you when we have our quiz, which will be pretty soon, to be able to classify triangles by sides and angles. Let me tell you one other little thing. Do you see this word equiangular? This is the word that means equal, and angular refers to angles. So that's why equiangular means three congruent angles. Okay, moving on. The triangle sum theorem. That's an important theorem, and you probably know it already without even realizing it. So the triangle sum theorem says that the sum of the measures of the three angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. That is the triangle sum theorem. Okay, the exterior angle theorem is really, really important because this gets asked in many ways. So, this is the definition of it. The measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of the two non-adjacent interior angles. And these are also called remote angles. 
Now that's a lot to take in. So let's draw a picture of that. Okay, so I'm going to draw a picture over here. Okay, here is a triangle. Okay, so we have three sides. If you continue this side, right here is an exterior angle. It's outside the triangle. Okay, then if I have a 1 and a 2 here, I can say that angle 1 plus angle 2 will always equal the exterior angle. Okay, and I know more things. Let's make that 3, and we'll make the exterior angle 4. Okay, so 1 plus 2 will always equal 4. We also know from previous studies that angle 3 plus angle 4 equals 180 degrees because they are, supplement, uh, they are supplementary. Okay, they are on this line. So that's good to know also. All right, so we're going to use that in some practice problems in just a minute. We have one more thing to say. Uh, we know that by the triangle sum theory, in every triangle you have 180 degrees. So there's something special about a right triangle. So here's a right triangle, almost a right triangle. If I draw my little box here, I know that that box in a right triangle has to be 90 degrees. So the other thing I know is if this is angle one and this is angle two, then they must make up the other 90 degrees. So what we know is that those acute angles of a right triangle, they are complementary. Okay, that's what that means. So I know that angle one plus angle two will always equal 90 degrees in a right triangle. Okay, so that's a lot of good, good notes there. Now let's do some examples. So going on to the next page, and you know, stop this video whenever you need to so that you can write some of the things down and process the information. Okay, so they give us this triangle in here. I make it a little darker just so you can see where we are. We're right here in the red. And the other thing they're telling you is that this equals this. So this says classify the triangle by sides and angles. So by sides, I look at them, I have two marked equal. So I know that this is an isosceles triangle. Then by angles, all of these angles in here, in here, and in here are all less than 90 degrees just by looks. So I know that in terms of classifying it by angles, this is an acute triangle. So it's isosceles and it's acute. Okay, so hopefully you can see that and recognize it. Okay, so this is what we just finished doing. Okay, so here comes that exterior angle. So what kind of things do you know? This is the exterior angle right here. And these are the two non-adjacent angles, also called remote angles. So if they want us to find JKM, which is the exterior angle, you need an equation. So see if you can come up with your own equation. So stop the video, see if you can come up with it, and then turn the video back on. Okay, an equation that will relate these two pieces of information is that x plus 70 has to equal the 2x minus 5. And that came from this definition up here. 
where I said the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of the two non-adjacent interior angles. So that allows me to set up an equation. Once I have an equation, since I only have one variable and that variable is x, I can get all the variables on one side, the numbers on the other side, and solve for the variable. And then use the variable to solve for the exterior angle. So this is what I'm thinking. I'm going to subtract x here. That's gone. Subtract x here. Rewrite my equation. I have 70 equals x minus 5. Let's move that 5 away. And I get 75 equals x. Okay, so that's part of my answer, but it's not the whole answer. Because I need to figure out how much, um, how many degrees are in this exterior angle. So now I'm going to plug x in. So 2 times 75 minus 5 is what the exterior angle is going to be. 2 times 75. 2 times 5 is 10, but then the 0 carry the 1. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15, minus 5. So therefore, what I'm finding is that my, let me just go back here. This is that, this is that. That is 145. That's the measure of the exterior angle. Okay, so this is 145. Now let's just verify this. If I know that my x was 75, I could have just plugged the x in over here and said 75 plus 70, and I would have gotten 145, and that's what I need. Okay, bonus question. What's the third angle of the triangle? How will I get it? I know on this line, they're going to sum to 180. So take 180 minus 145. Five left. So it looks to me like this angle down here is 35. So you can do a lot of solving when you know how to deal with exterior angles and you know how they're related to the angles inside a triangle and you know that the angles inside a triangle sum up to 180. Okay, so that was a lot of good work. So let's move on to this next example. Okay, so this says, find the angle measure from the verbal description. So let's start reading. The tile staircase shown forms a right triangle. That means you want to right away put your box in the corner that looks like the right angle. So right over here, this is 90 degrees. Then they go on to say the measure of one acute angle in the triangle is twice the measure of the other angle. Find the measure of each. So this is what you have to do. Find each acute angle. Okay, so which one looks bigger? Looks like the top one looks bigger. And it said that the biggest one, the other one is twice the measure of the smaller one. So this would be 2x and this would be x. So what are they? Well, I know that if I have a right triangle, the two acute angles add up to 90. So 3x equals 90, divide both sides by 3, and x equals 30. Now we're not done, because they want the angles, not the x. So here is x. So this angle must be 30 degrees. Here is 2x. So this angle must be 2 times 30, or 60 degrees. Okay, how is that? So that's where that comes from. That's how we figured out missing angles inside a triangle. And if you add them all up, you see you're going to get 180 degrees 
which is exactly what I need to be inside. Okay, so that was another good example. Okay, then they have some extra practice problems. They want you to draw an isosceles right triangle. Okay, so isosceles and right. So this is classifying by sides and this is classifying by angles. So if I draw a right triangle, and I indicate it by putting a little box in the corner, that takes care of the right triangle part. To show its isosceles, I need to make these two sides equal. And I do that by putting those hash marks on. You make that hash mark look nicer. Okay, so those hash marks are the same length. There's only one of them. That means that those two sides are equal. Now, I don't know what the measurement is, but I just know they're equal, and that's what I needed. And that took care of me explaining the sides. Okay, next one. Draw, this should say N, obtuse, okay, that deals with angles, and scalene deals with sides. So get your obtuse nature going first. So if I draw a line here, and then one out here, and then connect them with the third line, I have what looks like an obtuse triangle because this angle right here, that looks big, bigger than 90, so I'm gonna say that that's the obtuse angle. Then to be scalene, no sides are equal. So put hash marks on them, but put three different numbers of hash marks. That tells you that those sides are different lengths. Okay? Okay, we have a couple more examples here that I want to show you the homework and some of the algebra stuff. Okay, find the measure of DEF. First thing you've got to realize that DEF is this angle. It is an exterior angle. And therefore, I know that I can get an equation. The exterior angle equals the sum, which means addition, of the two remote or non-adjacent acute angles. So here is one, here is two. So I have my equation. Let's get the x's on one side and the numbers on the other side. So the first thing I would do is subtract x from each side, rewrite the equation, 2x plus 6 equals 80, subtract 6 from each side, 2x equals 74, divide by 2, divide by 2. Okay, without a calculator. 74 divided by 2. 2 goes into 7 three times. That's 6. You have one left over. Put it up above next to the 4. That makes that a 14. 2 goes into 14 seven times. So your x equals 37. But we are not done because we needed to figure out what the exterior angle is. So I now know that this angle has to be 37. So this is going to be 3 times 37 plus 6. Okay, so let's do 3 times 37 without a calculator. And that's going to be 3 times 7 is 21, and the 1 carry the 2. 3 times 3 is 9, and 2 more is 11. So, so far I have 111 plus another 6 equals 117. Boom. That's my value for the exterior angle. Now, I could have also <coughs> gotten that by adding these two angles together. So look what I get. Also, without a calculator, 80 plus 37, 7 and 0 is 7, 8 and 3 is 11. So it checks. Now, bonus situation. Get the other angle in the triangle. I know the exterior angle and the missing angle have to be supplementary. 
So take 180 minus 117. Borrow. That's 3. That makes this a 7. That makes this a 63. 63 degrees is what that other angle has to be. So now I've not only solved what they wanted me to solve, but I also talked about figuring out how to get all the missing angles, okay? Just by using some of the facts that I just learned. Okay, so that's another example. And let's go through one last thing. It says the support for a skateboard ramp. So here's the ramp. forms a right triangle. Okay, so here's 90 degrees. The measure of one acute angle in the triangle is five times the measure of the other. Okay, so you have to know how to place your variables. If this one is x, it's the smaller one, then this one is 5x. Find the measure of each acute angle. Okay, in a triangle, I have 180 degrees. If I have a right triangle, the right angle contributes 90. Therefore, the two remaining acute angles must sum to 90. 6x equals 90. Okay, without a calculator. 90 divided by 6. 6 goes into 9 one times with 3 left over. 6 goes into 30 five times. X equals 15. That's not sufficient because they want to know the angles. This angle is 15. The other angle is 5 times 15. Okay, 5 times 5 is 25. There's a 5 carry the 2. 5 times 1 is 5, and 2 more makes 7. This angle right here is 75 degrees. Okay, so we've answered both of those questions. Okay, so here, this is your homework right here. That's what you want to do for homework. Okay, all of these, read them carefully, answer the questions, and this page as well, and this page. So here's your algebra. Okay, I'm going to do two of these for you. Okay, you want to do this. Get the variable on the left. Okay, so I'm going to do two of them where the variable is not on the left. Okay, here are the variables on the right. So read this backwards. This says n is greater than negative 0 0.6. Okay, find approximately where negative 0 0.6 is and put an open circle there. If n is greater, your arrow is going to go this way, same direction as the inequality sign. You have an open circle because you cannot equal that value, and that's how you would write it. Okay, there's one other one that has it go in the different direction, and that's number 5. So take that one and read it backwards. So this is x is less than or equal to 1.9. Okay, find 1.9 approximately and fill in a dot. I'm filling it in because you can, you are allowed to equal that value because this is not a strict inequality. x has to be less than or equal to that. That's why it's filled in. And then the rest of it, you're going to go to the left. All right? Okay, so your job is to do three, two, four, and the rest of the homework listed in these pages. Okay, so that's what your job is for next class. Now, hopefully when you did this video, you didn't just turn off the sound and just fill in the words because this is really important stuff. It's on the midterm, and I want you to understand it.